Welcome to Catholic in America. Today we're talking about has the church changed its opinion on Freemasonry? So we're going to talk about the history of the Freemasons and their interaction with the Catholic Church, whether Catholics can be a member of the Freemasons or not. And uh, if you're if you're a Catholic or if you're a Freemason, does that mean that you have to quit membership in one in order to join the other? So if you'd like to learn more about how to build a building, that's not what we're talking about today. everyone. Welcome back to Catholic in America. Today we're talking about Freemasonry and the Catholic Church. And this, uh, I'm joined by uh, Father Michael Nixon and Father Tom Dillon. My name is Father Doug Martin. And so um, here we are, guys, talking about this. And um, article just came out. Uh, well, several articles and decisions have come out from the Vatican uh, about Freemasonry and our relationship towards uh, Freemasonry as Catholics. And so um, so what is what is this relationship or this lack of a relationship that we have with Freemasonry, Father Michael? You know, it's it's uh, it's one of those kind of long standing feuds, I, I guess you could put it between the uh, the the Catholic Church and the Freemasons. Um, people maybe not not super familiar with the Freemasons. Maybe, maybe um, you've probably seen the Shriners or like, you know, various variations of the El Elks Club, the Masonic Lodges in, in your area. Um, Shriners Hospital, you know, there, there's all there's all sorts of things, um, yeah. and maybe uh, you've known someone that was a, a part of those. I think probably membership in most membership in most clubs is kind of dwindling through the years, so so maybe not as, as strong a um, an attraction here in the United States, uh, but definitely throughout European history, uh, there was always strong contention between uh, Catholicism and Freemasonry. Masonry. There's a lot of anti-clerical movements and historical um, uh, Masonic movements uh, throughout uh, throughout history. I think of the Masonic movements that that influenced a lot of uh, politics in Europe and into the New World in Mexico that led to the anti-clerical laws in Mexico, anti-church laws, um, a lot of the revolutionary tendencies um, uh, throughout Europe uh, were anti-clerical and anti-church. So there's always been strong kind of um, political and, and economic uh, sort of uh, divides there. But it gets into, into theological ones as well, which I, I guess we, we can are, are more more the uh, the concern of the pope and the, the Vatican offices that have been speaking about it recently. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, uh, Father Tom, what, I mean, what what are those divides? What are some of those differences that we have with them between us and the Masons? Yeah, I, I mean, the most glaring one off the top of my head would be the divide between what is what is the ultimate authority and what do we look to as an ultimate authority? And like within obviously the Catholic Church and most Christians, we look to both the Scriptures. And from, especially from the Catholic Church, we look to the uh, consistent interpretation of the scriptures throughout the centuries, which we call tradition. And so that's where we find our council documents that were based upon the scriptures as well as the lived experience of the people. So we have the dogmas and doctrines that we look to as authoritative, uh, that these things are um, without error, um, at least in their dogmatic um, doctrinal form. Um, not everything that the Pope says is without error, but when he speaks infallibly, when he speaks um, on behalf of the church and when he speaks on behalf, as well as in correlation with the rest of the bishops um, of the church, that they speak on behalf. And we believe that they're being speaking on behalf of the Holy Spirit or that the Holy Spirit speaking through them um, right. versus in the Masonic lodges. And the, one of the major doctrines um, or tenets of Freemasonry is that they believe in reason and reason alone. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, it comes out of that enlightenment period of uh, history, which is a rejection of especially, uh, tradition, a rejection of anything which comes from divine revelation, which can't be verified through human reason and reason alone. And so yeah. that's where kind of this, this rejection, I mean, that's really the, mis the rise of the Masonic lodges came out of the guild movements of the middle ages, like without the guilds that were for the most part um, came about because of Catholicism, because of, of Christianity. Um, but then you have the guilds that were in place. You see all the different corruption that happens in the 13th, 14th and 15th centuries. And rightly so many people were disgruntled with the church. And so, but then like, it was like you throw the baby in the bathwater. So we're just going to throw out the teachings of the church which and as well as even in scripture, like there's that's where you find that there's many Masons who started off as Protestants, but now kind of the 
Masonic lodges were uh, subsequently kind of um, very much influenced by this uh, neo-Gnosticism as well as this uh, kind of this atheist rejection of God and rejection and the elevation of basically human reason and enlightenment. Well, what's yeah. interesting too, uh, Father Doug is, and, and Father Tom, correct correct my details on this, is kind of in that throwing out of the the Catholic mystique of religiosity or of priesthood or of liturgies and masses and, and sacraments and things. Um, they kind of recreated their own. And I think that's, that's yeah. maybe part of it too, is like apart from the revealed, um, you know, uh, uh, faith that comes through us through Judeo Christianity, sort of this this reason driven mystery religion, kind of to use that old phrase from the first century, where they they're steeped in their own kind of liturgical, and that's kind of you know official types of prayer and ways that they pray and garments that they use and, and oh yeah, it's and, very and, very um, rights, very, very much rights, like a lot of rights, rights, um, rights, yes, you know, that, yeah. you know all, yeah, so all those things I think is is interesting. So in a sense, to kind of get away from the Catholic thing that they just sort of recreated this very formulaic um, manifestation of that, which you could almost see as, as if, if you're looking at, you know, from, you know, from the, the perspective of this is something that is antithetical to Catholicism, which is what the church teaches on this. And we'll get into the why a little bit deeper um, is saying that it's, it's, um, to, you know, to be a little derogatory, but to say it's aping the, the, yeah. the liturgy of the church is aping this sort of transcendent experience. These official words spoken by official members, whatever level of Mason someone might be in order to do this, these secret rituals to reach enlightenment or reach freedom or reach a deeper, um, you know, sense of trust or success in some sort of worldly endeavor, which the guilds kind of set them up for. Um, so it is interesting how, how that became, becomes a major part of it as well. It might, might seem kind of laughable or unimportant for people to be like, oh, who cares? It's just a sort of silly thing that we do. But for us as Catholic Christians, we understand what we do really matters, what we do with our bodies, what we do with our even behind, you know, what we do behind closed doors um, yeah. matters profoundly. And so uh, these rituals would be something, a, a cause for, for great concern as well. Yeah, yeah. Very, very elaborate ceremonies that they do have. And I think some of the reason why maybe that uh, people have have kind of started to to kind of not see it for it for the seriousness that it is, maybe even in the Catholic churches is because it kind of gets lumped together with some of the uh, service organizations like the Kiwanis or uh, the Lions Club. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but that's what has has happened, at least in my experience, growing up in a little small town, less than 2000 people. Uh, my dad was a part of the Masons. And so there was one time I came to him and asked him questions based on things that I understood that they did and taught. And my dad was clueless to that stuff. Mm. My dad thought it was a Christian organization. When I asked him about particular uh, particular things that they taught or that the Masons teach, he had no clue what they were. And so it's kind of like what happens in um, in most religions. You know, as you go down the ladder, the less and less people know unless they're educated. And, you know, specifically back when I was growing up in the 80s or 90s, it's not like you had the Internet. It's not like you had places you could go to see what was actually being taught by the Masons. And so if it didn't make it down to your little branch, I think there were 12 or 15 of them in a little in this little house um hmm. you, you wouldn't really know exactly what the masons taught my dad never made it up to shriners or anything like that so, right. so it was just a secret you know it was kind of a secret thing my dad told me oh you got to go through the ceremonies to be a part of it but it, it wound up being more of a sur service organization at least in our town it was right and so it comes yeah. off as benign Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, benign sort of like it's it's got some secret again, the secret liturgical elements that are just like whatever. Yeah, you could do those. And it's kind of silly because Frank, you know, who runs the hardware store, right. he puts on a hat for this thing and, and, and then leads this incantation. And uh, then we're like we resolve to work hard and be good patriots. And right. then we're also going to all support this charity run that, that's going on this Saturday. And then right. we'll, we'll drink beers afterwards. So in a sense, it's like, yeah, just sure. We got this, the strange sort of, you know, side things of, of the liturgies that they do. But yeah. the main thing is, 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 you know, we're, we're good citizens and we hang out together. So it's a fraternal organization in that way. So a lot of times when people hear that in the Catholic church, it's, it's a, it's a mortal sin for a Catholic to be a part of, of, right. of the Masons, uh, which is very serious for those that don't know, we would say <laughs> you have to sever any and all ties with the Masons in order to be a faithful practicing Catholic. I'm sorry if that comes as a shock to people, but um, <laughs> you'd be like, well, why? That, 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 that's, that's so weird because 
they're just out there, you know, r- doing fun runs. <laughs> right, right, yeah, the, the fun this. runs, car washes, fish fries, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. and I think that that was, that was actually one of the articles which uh, which we I had read and uh, what you had fo- sent me, Father Michael, um, was that the whole their whole notion though of fraternity, which is a major part of their organization, is the fraternal. I mean, like you said, it came out of the guilds which yeah. were fraternal organizations of like-minded business people. Um, so when you're looking at business people getting together, there's also like, there's this mutual self-interest and mutual benefit that they're providing. And that's actually one of the things with the Masons that are, they're very good with, and that's not a bad thing is that they help each other and mm-hmm. that they are obliged to help each other by their, by part of their, their tenants, their doctrines. Um, so there is this, this notion of helping each other as well as when they agree on a project, they help each other, but the basis the basis of their fraternity um, is one of the major differences between the basis of our Christian Catholic fraternity versus the Masons. Their fraternity is based upon um, kind of this humanist um, idea of that we're all brothers, like everyone's brothers, especially that's what even what they call each other brothers. Yeah. Right. We're all brothers, but it's this, it's like this very, um, distant brotherhood as opposed to a brotherhood where as Catholics, the reason why we are brothers is because we are united together in a fraternity through our participation through Jesus. Like Jesus is the one who ultimately makes us all brothers. And so it's also Jesus who who created the church and who brings us all. That's one of the things Jesus says more often not than anything else. He says, go tell my brothers that I've risen from the dead. So like this notion of fraternity and brotherhood, um, both present, but there's, but there's a, the missing, Although you could say that, I mean, some, some obviously there, there might be some Masons who are like, well, no, 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 we, we believe in the great architect and things like that. But that's the whole right. point. Like, how do they define the great architect and how do they define, um, which obviously you're talking about Masons who build things like architect, right, right. like who, <laughs> who is the great architect? But that's why, like, from the Catholic perspective, no, like Jesus, but not just Jesus, the man, but Jesus, God is the one who unites us together. And that's not something which is agreed upon with obviously between us and, and the Masons. And that's going to be a major point of distinction between the two of us. Right. And I say something, I'm, I love that point you made about the brotherhood, Father Tom, because to me, and and I'm just kind of thinking this out loud right now, that that there's a difference between, and I, I would say it's, it's it might seem on the surface to not be that much of a difference. Brother, you know, Christians call each other brothers and sisters all the time, but we understand our common um, sonship, we're sons in the son, you know, as, as, you know, sons in, in, in and through Christ Jesus, that our, uh, we're brothers because not because of something we have done, but because what God has done for us, for them, they would be brothers because of something that they have done. They participated right. in the rituals. They've done the things that makes them now that they've entered into this society, this secret society, which is really what it is. Um, and so that they're now brothers there. So for us, that. W- we're fundamentally uh, receiving what God himself has done. It's not something that we ourselves, which goes back to that enlightenment sort of thing. It's something that we achieve by reason. We achieve by work. We achieve by, by diligence, by prescribed rights. Yeah. You know, that, that we, we receive this status as brothers uh, to each other, but for us as Christians, again, it seems like it's, it's, it's splitting hairs, but I think it's, it's a world of difference to say that it's not something that we do, but something that's been done for us. Right. Adoption. We we were adopted and brought into the family as opposed to we're joining it and it's a a membership or it's joining a secret society. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got to admit, before I became Catholic and, you know, I'm a a convert um, and or, well, I've come into the fullness of the church. I'll put it the proper way. Um, So um, before I came into the fullness of the church, um, I, you know, I was introduced to the Knights of Columbus and from the from you know, just from the initial look of it, I asked, I said, oh, is this just the Catholic version of the Masons? And boy, was I really. Uh, <laughs> that, that Gary, was, you could make that argument. <laughs> yeah, you could, but it wasn't the right question to ask because they took exception to that. But well, that's they were founded to combat the Masons. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so, you know, so do we know which came first? Oh, the Masons were before the Knights, Knights of Columbus were established in the United States in the early 1900s. Okay. Mas- right. The Masons exactly. could go back to the Enlightenment, right. which was a bunch of, obviously, and that's, the, that's the hard thing that I've at least found with talking, because I know Masons, and they're, they're generally speaking, they're, they're good people. Yeah. Like, and many of them don't really even know the details of of it. A lot of guys, guys join it for just the social element, and they don't well, really get dad. involved. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have Masons in my family. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I don't really think that most of them actually really knew the actual tenants. Well, guys, I'm not going to talk to either one of you from now on. Now that you're <laughs> about your family history. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have the, to reject uh, that huh, before we can uh, keep going. <laughs> and I mean, that's, and that's the, whole, the whole thing is like with the Masons, like you were saying earlier, uh, Father Doug, is that like it, it has become like this trickle down where now it's kind of cafeteria. You have cafeteria masonry. Yeah. Just like you have like cafeteria Catholicism, like people who just kind of practice it, but they don't actually take it seriously. Right. Um, but like, no, the, the Masons definitely are older than the Knights of Columbus, but the Catholic church is a lot older than the Masons. Right. But, oh, no, the, absolutely. Uh, but then, you know, I mean, the Knights of Columbus were founded, um, by yeah. what was it? Father McGivney, I believe is yeah, uh, Father McGivney. Yep. And yeah. was founded specifically because there was a lot, a lot of Catholic men who were joining the Masons and they didn't realize they were being indoctrinated and right. with all these subversive ideas that they were learning in the lodges and they were coming back and there was major conflicts that were happening in the churches. The church looked at this because there's, there, there is this thing that within the Masons, like is like, especially it feeds this desire that men especially have for brotherhood and fraternity. Mm. And so yeah. like the Catholic church, like that's why Father McGivney recognized, like, you know, everything the Masons are doing is not wrong. Like they're, they're feeding on something which is, and there, there, there's a void apparently in the church with yeah. community because sometimes that's the whole problem. Like you can come to church on Sunday um, and go every single week, but not really have community, fraternity, fellowship. And so like the Knights of Columbus right. were founded by, um, were founded to provide Catholics with a alternative organization of fraternity so that they could have that need for community met, especially with brotherhood. Um, but without having the subversive doctrines that came through the Masonic Lodge. Because, right. I mean, I've looked at some of the Masonic literatures and read it, and it's very plural. Yeah. Like, a lot of the stuff is very pluralistic. Like, they, they look at right. the, the wisdom of all ages, going all the way back to ancient Egypt, right? And so, like, they talk about these mystery right. cults, the mystery religions. Um, and there's even in, in, there are invocations within some of their rites, um, calling upon things going all the way from Horus to Athena, like all these wisdom gods. And that's where like, that's when you start invoking pagan gods and goddesses, yeah, yeah. regardless of how that's you, where you start getting in trouble. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and, you know, I understand too, that the Masons were kind of formed because uh, I mean, the Knights of Columbus were formed because, you know, at one point specifically at the beginning, you know, it, it, as Catholics were coming to the United States, um, they were not being welcomed. And so you had to be a Mason if you wanted to get a job, you know, wanted to be right. in a trade or whatever. And so they created the Knights of Columbus so that Catholic men could have that as well. And, you know, power and strength and numbers, if you will. So, um, okay, yeah, well, I, we're going to take a break just for a minute. Uh, we'll be right back. So stay tuned. Whatever the original intent for social media was, it probably wasn't this. Well, I'm sure you've seen this viral video. M, 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 M to the B. Gaming week day three. This egg is the most liked Instagram picture. Yikes. See what I mean? <laughs> However, at St. Dominic Media, we found a much better way to do social. It is a joy, a pleasure to want to spend time with the Lord and with one another. If you, if you delight in the Lord, He would give you the desires of your heart. And so I prayed Him to send me to the right church. And so He led me to the one that He established, which is the Catholic Church. So I'm sitting in my quiet space, you know, my time with God, praying for my grandchildren. Understand that the devil isn't only the enemy of our souls, he's the enemy of our human nature. And so what God has joined, he wants to rupture. <laughs> Judeo-Christian values. No, no, you, 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 you corrected it. Judeo-Christian Judeo values. <laughs> Your brain corrected it. Oh, that's fantastic. Every year, we produce hundreds of dynamic, faithful Catholic videos that reach millions of people, both online and on television. At St. Dominic Media, we're doing the heavy lifting of creating good quality Catholic content, and we'd love for you to partner with us, either by visiting stdominicmedia.com and following the share link, or by using the offertory envelopes offered by your parish from OSV. Help us sow seeds far and wide as we use new media's potential for good. Together, let us invest in and grow the kingdom. Back to Catholic in America and our conversation on the relationship or the lack of their the lack of a relationship between the Catholic Church and Freemasonry. 
And guys, it's uh, we really appreciate you watching these videos. Also, too, if these videos are making a difference in your life, if you'd like other people to have access to them and to see them, uh, it really helps us out if you could like, share, and subscribe. Um, and uh, tell your family and friends, tell your enemies, tell your friends who are Masons, your friends who are Catholics um, about our channel and about Lights, the things that yeah. we're sharing. And uh, we love doing it. And we, and we love you coming alongside and helping us out. Great. Yeah. So, so Father Tom, you were saying before the break that um, you had mentioned the enlightenment and specifically this idea of Gnosticism. Now, we've done a show on Gnosticism. So if you want to look for a kind of a detailed, uh, a little bit more detailed uh, explanation of that, you can go look at that show. But but just for, for this show, uh, Father Tom, if you could kind of give just a, a brief synopsis of Gnosticism and maybe where we kind of see that seep into Freemasonry. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about Gnosticism as we go back to the last episode. It's, it's hard because there's no universal single authority on what it is, and but there's 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 general a general kind of uh, marks general tenets of a Gnostic mindset. That'd be better, maybe a better way of looking at Gnosticism. And Gnosticism, uh, Saint Paul wrote against the Gnostics, um, the secret cults, and sometimes they were in, they can be found in Jewish thought, they can be found in pagan thought. Um, and it's, it's always been this subversive thing that's tried to enter into Christianity to influence Christianity. But uh, the, the major thing with Gnosticism is the elevation of secret knowledge so that there are secrets and which is, which is kind of, which is like, it's one of those things that we kind of like as human beings. Like, I, like I want to know the secret information, but this is like, that's one mm -hmm. of the major things is that the, the pathway to divinity is found yeah. in secrets, secret withheld from the common person, but is only, uh, made known to a few special elites. So have you ever seen the movie, the matrix, like everyone else is stupid. Mm -hmm. There's only a few people who are smart and who have the secret knowledge and who really see reality as it actually is. And so the pathway towards divin divinization or the pathway towards enlightenment or the pathway towards immortality or the pathway to exiting your body specifically and coming to this alternative state of existence um, and it seems almost at times like this, this state of higher consciousness where you'll live forever is found through a secret by, uh, by unpacking the secrets of the universe. And that's actually one of the major dis differences between that and Catholic Catholicism and Christianity is that we don't believe that there's a secret knowledge. The, all, the knowledge that has been made known for divinization has been made known to all people. Like the veil has been torn. The, there's no longer right. secret revelation. That's what the word revelation. Everything has been revealed to all men and everything that God is going to reveal has been revealed. If you want to live forever, if you want divinity, right. but that's the whole, the right. whole point with the Gnostics as well as where you'll find this Gnostic leaning within Freemasonry is that no, there still is some secrets to be known. And that's actually even with the word occult, uh, occult, occult yeah. means literally it means, secret knowledge like that and that's yeah. what the, the the church condemns various types of secret knowledge especially secret knowledge that comes into direct con conflict with what has been divinely and what has been revealed and so like if right, if right. your secret knowledge the church actually has a, a thing for like uh pious devotion as well as for like um piety and as well as like particular devotions that um we make a difference between private revelation and public revelation and by this word like we say no there are some private relations out there but private revelation can never come into conflict with uh public revelation but like with the gnostics yeah. as well as with the, the general idea like these the, there's the secret knowledge the secrets of the universe uh, going all the way back to the ancient Greeks and the ancient Egyptians, like alchemy and these alchemical processes. And the, if you just have the secrets of the universe, you can unpack the hidden formulas. And so it goes into this like very old, which has just been kind of revamped. And as my grandfather used to say, it's different packaging, but it's the same garbage. <laughs> so, <laughs> it doesn't come up with anything new. It just re repackages the same garbage. So... Yeah, and and most of the, the Gnostic uh, religions and sects throughout history, and definitely Mason, the Freemasons are the same. That the gnosis, which is knowledge, that's the Greek word for knowledge. That's where you get the word Gnostic again. You know, secret knowledge comes through secret rituals as well. So, so again, all those things. And I think what's interesting is one of the main reasons too. So we as Catholic Christians would be against it because it's Gnostic also too, because of what they actually believe about Jesus. I loved. Um, so we we were we were laughing about. <laughs> We were laughing. We were discussing we were uh, the, the <laughs> conference that recently happened, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, one of the things that, that, that they pointed out in this conference, um, kind of the, the app, uh, 
Catholics and kind of Masons in dialogue was this this problem of Arianism, which basically denies the divinity of Christ. It's a fourth century uh, heresy um, that the church has been fighting this for a very long time, which in some ways kind of grew out of Gnostic tendencies as well. Right. But saying that the, the Masons have a fundamentally Arian um, and not I'm talking about like Aryan nation kind of thing. Yeah, not um, A-R-I. Or from, from the priest area. Different, big different. Yeah, yeah. yeah different area. Not, yeah, R-I and not R-Y um, that denied the divinity of Christ. So that Jesus is like the best guy in the world. He's holy. He's enlightened. He's smart. He's wise. He's all these sorts of things. Um, he's not God as we he's, would understand he's a Buddha. him as, you know, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> He's basically a Buddha who's been who's transcended, who's been raised up, who's been, you know, lifted up or, or, or enlightened or whatever. And so they, they would be very comfortable saying that. But to say that that Jesus Christ is the second person of the Blessed Trinity, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made what we would say in the creeds and our understanding of consubstantial with the father. They would not say that or believe that. And so. Yeah. By even if they say that, oh, it's okay that you believe that, and you could still be, you know, sometimes that's kind of the the um, the, the sort of leveling of of dogmas. It doesn't matter um, if, if I don't quite believe, you know, Orthodox Christianity about Jesus. We believe Jesus was a really important person, maybe the most important person ever to live. You can kind of even put it in those terms. But there, there's a fundamental heresy, and I think that that's that's the difficult word for people there. So right. it'd be heretical for a Catholic Christian to, um, or a Christian, you know, a Christian in good faith to subscribe to or to align themselves with a Masonic um, ideology because they're basically right. betraying fun, a fundamental aspect of what it means to be a Christian, which is to believe in the divinity of Jesus. Right, right. And I, I do like this idea that you, you guys are um, talking about with revelation being re- revealed and uh, the idea that um, every, any is accessible to anyone. I mean, there, there's nothing that we do in the Catholic Church uh, that's secret. It, there's nothing that we do behind closed doors that we don't do out in public. There's there's no sort no, of we, knowledge we, we, that we do, we, that we do have the secret of, archives, right? <laughs> Well, we did have that. We have yeah. the seal of confession. We don't talk about people's sins publicly, but outside of outside yeah. of the secret That's archives, we, which for the most part, not exactly not as same, secret and yeah. as interesting as most people think they are. Yeah, but, I think you can get into really, the secret archives by writing a letter. <laughs> so it's not bad. I'm asking. <laughs> but there's nothing that the three of us. I mean, there's nothing the three of us know that someone else couldn't have access right. to. Not really. So, yeah. So, and that's, that's just the, the biggest difference and the huge, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, and so, and, and I do think that, that people do like being a part of something secretive. Some, they, they do like having knowledge that other people don't, you know, doesn't have. And you see this in religion and not just, you know, in, in the difference between Masons and Catholics, but you see it in, uh, in some, even some of our Christian religions, but you definitely see it, you know, all, all throughout the Eastern and the mystics. Um, the, um, so as we, as we move forward, so, you know, the question is, has the church changed its opinion on masonry? Well, first of all, what is the, the church's official stance towards it? I think we've talked about it, but let's make it clear. And then, um, has it, ha, are we changing? Is there a change, uh, in the Catholic thinking? Well, the, the, the teaching of the church is that to participate in this organization is a serious grave sin. So it's, it's sin of a grave, it's grave matter. And persons who are guilty of sin of a grave matter, um, what, it might be mortal, it might not be mortal, but it's it's grave matter, it's serious matter. And a person who's actively engaged in that and is not repentant should not receive communion. So because they are not in communion with the church. And so they leaves I'm not saying that every Mason is going to go to go to hell because we don't know their right. intent. We don't know what they know. But we can say that objectively speaking, the, the tenets, the dogmas, doctrines of the uh, Masonic uh, positions are incompatible with Catholicism, incompatible with Christianity because they're they're heretical. And so Catholics should not yeah. Catholics who believe these things or Catholics who believe what the Masons hold don't believe what the church holds. And therefore, to profess communion with the Catholic Church and to receive communion, um, they should not be receiving communion. Right. Yeah. And and so so has the Catholic Church began to change that opinion? I mean, is there a loosening up? Because you see in recent years this uh, this big ecumenical movement, at least with other parts of uh, of the Christian uh, family, is, you know, with the Lutherans and, and with the Anglicans, there's dialogue that's going on there and, you know, um, even some some things that have been signed jointly together, whether it's mm-hmm. the Vatican or, or theologians. And so is there is there beginning to be a change in this? 
you know, it's it's interesting. So kind of what, what spurred this on for us was was a recent just earlier this in, in February um, of a, a prominent cardinal who asked for a, a said there needs to be a a permanent dialogue between Catholics and Freemasons. And uh, to me, maybe like a maybe maybe it could be seen as a softening without um, without distinction, because I think in the 19, I'm pretty sure in the 1917 Code of Canon Law to be a Freemason mean you would be ex automatically excommunicated if you were a Freemason. Yeah. And I don't believe that's in the 1983 code of canon law, though it has been reiterated over and over again um, yeah. by the church that Catholics can't be a member of the Freemasons, basically. Again, correct me if I'm wrong in, in, in the comments, yeah. but that the 1917 code of canon law, which you know is, is the universal law for the church, the Catholic church, um, which was in effect till 1983 when the new code of canon law was made, had an automatic sentence of excommunication for a Catholic who joined a Masonic order in, in any way. Who, a Catholic who became Mason was automatically excommunicated. I don't believe that that was in the 1983 code, um, but still the church continued to teach that a Catholic cannot be a member of of a uh, the Masons, that it is a it is grave matter and can be a mortal sin in order for for, for a Catholic to uh, to join the Masons or, or to seek membership there. Um, so, in a sense, that I think maybe we could see it as a softening or an openness to dialogue and a a, uh, a recognition of maybe there's are are some good aspects there, but still being holding very fast, very strongly, I would say the Church on on theologically, there's there's huge. Um, yeah, it's 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 completely incompatible, um, and and I think the church is still trying to say that. Now, now that that's what's interesting about that too is that the church is not really publicly acknowledging all the behind the scenes stuff that the, the Masons right. have done against the church. Like, and that's right. and that's like that's a very to me it's almost kind of like pretend that this stuff you know again the the great the anti clerical movements that swept through Europe, um, that swept through the New World, that swept through. Um, all of Latin America, most of those were directly influenced. All the political actors who were involved with that, all the revolutionaries that eventually opened the way for communism in certain areas of Latin America as well. Um, the, the outright persecution of the Catholic Church in Mexico up into the early 20th century, uh, where priests were being executed in the streets, that there was a Masonic movement behind, or at least, let me say, not the only thing, but attached to that completely. So to me, it's, it's sort of like a pretend like that never happened or don't really acknowledge yeah. that or don't really claim because, you know, it wasn't like there was like the one like head of the Masons somewhere that was calling the shots in that, um, right. but you know, cause it manifests itself differently in different countries. Uh, but it is interesting that there was this, that, that divide to my knowledge has never really been acknowledged. Um, and we're trying to say that, but there still are these theological problems with, um, with, with masonry. So it would make it sure. inconsistent. And, well, and, well, and I, and I, I remember reading and, and I, I can't remember if I was reading it as fact or as someone's opinion that, um, there was an infiltration that they tried to infiltrate the church, trying to become priests and bishops if they could, um, while not telling the truth about that. I, I don't know if that's true, but I, maybe there's some, uh, well, history out there I mean, about that. There, there is, there is obviously, true. I mean, definitely people who i think that the difficulty with this is like freemasonry is not like the catholic church in terms of its organization right. and structure and i think that sometimes is the um the difficulty like the freemasonry is structured more like protestantism than it is like catholicism yeah. there's not a singular head of the Masonic right. order. There's not some like grand poopa somewhere who, who dictates to right. everyone right. that these are the tenets and the doctrines of Freemasonry. Like Freemasonry is an, is an ideology. And so it's, it's hard, to, it's hard yeah. to combat an ideology. It's also why there's divisions within the Masons mm -hmm. themselves. Like, and that's why there's that, and that's right. one of the reason I think why the Bishop, I believe it was a Milan was talking about maybe that we need to look at this dialogue with, with Masons, because like there are some Masons who are, like hardcore old old European ma masons who are very ant anti clerical, anti church, anti tradition. But then you also have like American masonry, which is a little bit different. And that's the thing is like you. It depends upon your lodges and it depends upon the, the different uh, places that you are. So that's what I'm saying. It's like it's more structure. Like the structure of it is is more similar to saying like well Baptists and and Episcopalians and Lutherans and Calvinists, right. they're all Protestants. Right. And so they all fall into the same category, but the, the categorization of placing all Protestants into one category, it's a convenient for linguistic purposes, but it's not, it's not, it's not accurate. 
it, to, to put to put them all no. into, into this one group. Although there are, like I said, there are certain things that group Protestants together in the same way that there are certain principles that that group uh, Freemasons together. But that's what I'm saying. Like you're going to find a wide swath of differences in Freemasonry. And that's one of the, one of the reasons, but sure. still it is those things is that I think that's also why the church is not really like, we're not changing our opinion on who Jesus is as well as what the need for authority of scripture and tradition. And like if, if the Masons right. or some of these Masons Masonic lodges and some of the Masons are willing to change their positions on certain things with like, there might be the possibility of dialogue, but if they're going to hold, if they're going to hold to certain theological principles or tenants like right. if they're not going to budge we're certainly not going to budge and there's 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 like to make compatible or the synthesize things that are incompatible like that's that's to we can't do that so no the church is not changing its position yeah. it's just looking and saying like let's look let's look at these at this but that's where i think recently that's what yeah. we recently had is the uh uh one of the vatican officials came out and said no you cannot be a member of the masons like right so and I would I would maybe put this as as an invitation for anyone listening to this maybe someone who grew up Protestant or or non Catholic evangelical and maybe joined the Masons as a teenager or something um, maybe to even ask that question maybe they've never asked that question before does that does that your belief in in who Jesus is the divinity of Jesus Christ um, which as we've said the Masons have hold at least a an Aryan um, you know they might not call it that. Um, heret heretical understanding of who Jesus is, is that enough to say like, all right, well, then I can't have membership with this organization because there's something about this that I think touches on we and maybe it's us in the Western world like and, and this is more of a sense than, than, than something I've got a lot of facts to back up the sense that I can do something or I can be a part of something and I don't really need to believe all of it. I don't really that, right. that, that, that doesn't really, like in a sense I could do it because it's beneficial to me. And it's almost like my word doesn't really matter, even though I say, like, I promise with all my heart this thing, um, as long as my fingers are partly crossed. And there's something right. about that to say, like, like, what if we're being called to be, have integrity in every part of our lives, including our social lives, including the clubs we're a part of, including um, the, yeah, the organizations that we subscribe, you know, subscribe to and, and, and uh, the things that we listen to, the, how we feed our mind and heart. There's something about this, I think, that is this Christian sense of I'm not a disintegrated person. I'm an integrated person. And so what I do over here should be should be consistent with what I'm doing over here. And that, that's an invitation for all of us. And I, I would right. encourage people to, to ask that question. This is something maybe you're not saying, well, I don't care what the Pope says about about Freemasons. I'm, right. you know, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. And my pastor seemed fine with it um, to say like, OK, but but possibly if this is what they believe and what they teach, um, am I should you know if I'm trying to be consistent, should I choose between those two Orthodox Christianity um, or or this Masonic movement? And that that's a, that's a tough choice. But 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 again, I I know where I would choose, which which would be Orthodox right. Orthodox Christianity. Uh, what's yeah. revealed by by you know Scripture and the creeds and councils of of, of the Church. Um, and but but making sure that we're not trying to live that disintegrated life, I, I think, is really what the Church is calling us to. Inviting all Catholics, obviously, who are beholden to this and are. are subject to the authority of of the church and her teaching authority uh, but also too for all christians and all those of goodwill to, to ask that same question yeah yeah i think that's a good stopping point for us so uh thank you guys for the conversation father michael father tom and thank you for joining us we're so glad that you were here please like share and subscribe this so that other people can see this great content that you're enjoying now and we'll see you again next time god bless <laughs>